So today we're going to solve quadratic equations and there are going to be three methods that we cover. Okay, We're going to cover graphing using square roots and factoring. All right, Those are the three ways that, that we're going to solve quadratic equations today. All right, but before we begin to solve, there are three terms that we want to be able to define. All right, so open your workbooks to page 78, okay? Page 78. And you'll see the three methods we're going to talk about. There's graphing, there's using square roots, and there's factoring. All right? So the first definition, first uh, term we're going to define are, uh, is quadratic equation in one variable. Okay? So the quadratic equation, or I should say, what we want to write is a standard form of a quadratic equation. We want to be able to know what that is off the top of our heads. Okay? So the standard form form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, ax squared plus bx plus c. Alright, and when we have a quadratic equation in standard form, we know that the c is a y-intercept. Okay, the c is the y-intercept and the a will tell us whether it opens up or down. Okay, the a is positive it opens up a is negative it opens down. Okay, that will just help us identify the graph. Okay, when we see it. We'll be able to identify the equation of a graph if we can recognize these two things or make this connection. Okay? The next term that we need to know is the root of the equation. And the root of an equation is just the solution. Okay? Okay? Okay, the root of the equation is the solution. Alright, and the zero of a function, that's the solution, or the x-intercept, okay? The solution, the zero, the x-intercept, that's all the same thing, okay? So if they ask to find the solution, the x-intercept, or the zero, they're all asking for the same thing. Same as when they ask to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, so these are the three terms that we need to know. We need to remember the standard form, and we need to know that the root of an equation is also solution, and the zero of a function is also the solution or the x-intercept. All right. Now, the first way that we're going to learn how to solve equation is by graphing, okay? Is by graphing. So if we're given the equation x squared plus 3x plus 2. If we're given this equation and we're asked to find these solutions, okay? find the solutions or we're asked to find the zeros or the x intercepts that all means the same thing okay that all means the same thing so what we want to do is we want to plug these terms into a calculator okay so hold on a second I'm going to go grab a calculator I forgot one
Okay. If you do not have a personal calculator, you can use a program on the computer or there are apps that you can download on your phone. But what you'll need is a graphing calculator. Okay. So what you want to do is whatever calculator you may have, you want to graph it. So here I'm going to go to menu, go to graph, edit entry, I'm going to go to function. All I'm going to do is I'm going to type in this function. So I'm going to type in x squared plus 3x plus, sorry that's x squared, so plus 3x plus 2. I'm going to enter and I'll get my graph. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see. So if we're looking for the solutions, okay, if we're looking for the solutions, Here we go, I zoomed in and it changed the scale. But if we're looking for the solutions, we're looking to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay? We're looking for the x-intercepts. We're looking for the zeros. So I want to look at the two or however many places there are that the, the function crosses the x-axis. So here we're going by increments of 0 0.2. This is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. So this function crosses the axis at 1, or negative 1. So one of my solutions is x equals negative 1. The next one, if we count over, that's 1.2, negative 1.4, negative 1.6, negative 1.8, negative 2.0. So the next place that it crosses the x-axis is that x equals negative 2. So these are my two solutions, are my two zeros, are my two x-intercepts. So we want to solve the equation by graphing. All we have to do is plug this this function into the graph or this equation and find our x-intercepts. Locate those. It's that easy. Okay. For some reason we're unable to identify where it crosses. Here, let's pretend that there were no hash marks, there were no ticks. Okay and we were asked to find the zeros, we would obviously see that it crosses the x-axis. We just might not necessarily know where. So what we want to do is, now depending on your calculator, you may not, may or may not be able to do this, but we want to hit menu, okay, analyze, oh, I hit the wrong one, analyze, and right there where it says zero, we want to hit zero. Okay. Now, we want to plot this line outside of the uh, intercept that we're looking at. The x intercept, plot one outside, and then you see a little highlight in this little dialog box will pop up that says zero. Plot the other line inside the x intercept. So outside and inside the x-intercept and you'll see it will plot a point where that is and we'll hit enter and then it will find us our zero so here we have a zero at negative one comma zero okay when y is zero x equals negative one now only plots one at a time so we have to repeat this process again for the point over here okay so that is graphing okay that's solving a quadratic equation by graphing. All we do is we plug this equation in to a calculator or a computer program or app and we look to see if this is the x-axis, okay? We look to see where this parabola, this quadratic function, crosses the x-axis. And at those two points, that's our answer, okay? So now, That's graphing. If we're ever unsure, we can use uh, the zero operation. So we can hit menu, analyze, and zero to find it. If we're ever unsure of what 
where it crosses. So now the next method we're going to talk about is using square roots. Okay. Now this is something that we've done before. The only wrinkle that we're throwing in is the connection that you have to make with x-intercept and solution. Okay. All we're saying now is that the solutions or the zeros that we find, the roots that we find, those are the x-intercepts of the quadratic. Okay, those are the x-intercepts on the graph. So if we're given the equation 4x squared minus 64 equals 0. Okay, and this is the method of using square roots. Okay, if we're given this equation, what we want to do is uh, solve for x, okay? And the reason, the reason we want to solve for x is that we have only two different terms, okay? We have an x squared and a constant. So when we have an x squared term and a constant, we want to solve for x, okay? Whenever we only have two different terms, we want to solve for x. So the first step is to add 64 to both sides. Okay, so you get 4x squared equals 64. When we solve for x, we're isolating x. So the next step is to divide by 4 to both sides. So we get x squared equals 16. And now, to get rid of this power of 2, we want to do the inverse operation. So we want to take the square root. So if we take the square root of both sides, we'll undo the power. And when we take the square root of this term here, it needs to be plus or minus. Okay? It needs to be plus or minus. Some of you guys may ask why. Why does this need to be plus or minus? Well, let me ask you the question, what is the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4, most of you guys will say, is 2. Well, the square root of 4 is also negative 2. So, and, it's 2 and negative 2. So, there's a positive and negative value that gives us 4. Well, here, there's a positive and negative value that gives us x squared. So, we, when we take the square root, both sides, the, the right side here needs to be plus or minus. So now this becomes x, and this here becomes plus or minus 4. Sorry, that looks a little sloppy. But we get x equals plus or minus 4 as our answer. And x plus 4 and x minus 4 would be our roots, our solution. Okay? So now another example. If we're given 2x squared plus 14 equals 70. Okay? A lot of you guys may be like, well, we have three terms now. Well, the condition for when we want to use square roots or when we want to solve for x is when there's only two different terms. Okay? We have two terms here, but 14 and 70, I mean we have three terms total, but the 14 and the 70, they're the same. Okay, They're both constants. So really we have an x squared term and two constant terms. So we still only have two different terms. So we want to solve for x. We still want to solve for x. So our first step is to subtract 14. So we're left with 2x squared equals 56. We want to get rid of this 2 or move this 2 over, so divide by 2. So your x squared equals 28. Now to undo the power of 2, we want to do the inverse, inverse operation, so you want to take the square root, so we get square root of x squared equals square root 28. Now if at, if at any moment I'm moving too fast in this video, you can always pause, okay? You can always pause in between steps. 
So now if we take the square root of x squared, we're left with x. And here, if you guys remember, I need to make sure that this is plus or minus, okay? Anytime we take the square root of both sides, the constant or whatever's on the opposite side of the variable we're isolating it needs to become plus or minus. Okay? So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 28. Alright? Now, this is our answer, but it is not simplified. Okay? We need to check to make sure this square root is simplified. Well, it's not a perfect square. There's no whole number that multiplies to itself that gives us 28. Alright? But we do need to see if we can break this down, if we can simplify it. So we want to use the factor tree method. Alright, so we have 28 here. Well, we want to break it down by prime factors. So we have 2 and f 14 we know will give us 28. 2 times 14 is 28. And then 2 times 7 is 14. Well, are these all prime numbers? Yes. 2, 2, and 7 are prime numbers now. And since this is square root, we want to look for pairs. Are there any numbers or pairs of the same number? Well, there's two twos, so there's a pair of twos. Since there is a pair of twos, we want to factor out that two, okay? Or take it out of the radical, right? If we take it out of the radical, we have two times the square root of whatever was in the uh, whatever was left. So since we pull out this group of twos, we have two, and then we're left with the seven. So we get two square root of seven. Now this is now in simplest form. So our answer is x equals plus or minus two square root of seven. Okay. For every factoring, and we have two twos, or we have two pairs. So, for example, let's just pretend this is just hypothetical that we had another pair of twos. Okay. Well, what we would do is we would uh, take out two twos. Okay. So instead of taking out one, if we had two pairs, we'd take out two, and that now become two times two is four. So our answer would be four times square root of seven. Okay instead of 2 times square root of 7. If for some reason we have no pairs, then we just keep it as square root of 28. Okay? Alright. Now, what if we use, we're solving for x, okay? We only have two different terms. We solve for x, and in our answer we get x equals plus or minus the square root of a negative number. Okay, let's put negative in the number sign because it could be any negative number. When we have a negative number under the square root, okay, there are no real solutions. Okay, if there are no real numbers. Um, okay, we can't take the square root of a negative number, okay, and get a real solution. There are no real numbers that multiply together. There are no, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here, but there are no numbers, okay, no negative numbers that we can square that will give us another negative number. Anytime we square a number, we get a positive, okay? So anytime we get a negative number under the radical, we our answer will be no real solutions, okay? No real solutions, all right? So again, if at any point our, in our answer we have a negative number under the square root, we know that there are no real solutions. Alright. Now that was the second method. That was using square roots. Okay. So the third method that we're going to do is solve by factoring. Now this is again something that we've done before we have factored 
and we solve the equations by factoring. Again, the only difference today is that we're making that connection that our solutions, our zeros, our roots, those are the x-intercepts when we graph it. Okay, those are the x-intercepts of the parabola. So now when we solve by factoring, if we're given an equation, if we're given x squared plus 2x equals 48. Okay. Okay, if we're given this equation, we now have three different terms. We have an x squared, an x, and a constant. All right, we no longer only have two terms that are different. We have three that are different. So this means that we want to solve by factoring. And when we solve by factoring, the first step is to set it all equal to zero. Okay, we want all the terms on one side. So our first step is to subtract 48 from both sides. And we'll get x squared plus 2x minus 48 equals 0. And here we have a trinomial. Now the method that we use to factor a trinomial is the AC method. Okay, that's again something that we've done before. So the AC method. So what is AC? Well, AC is A times C, so 1 times negative 48. So AC is negative 48. And then our B is 2. Okay. So what two numbers multiply to give us 48, 6, and 8. All right. And this is a negative 48. So which one of these needs to be negative to give us 2? Okay. When we combine these two numbers, which one needs to be negative to give us 2? Well, yes, 6 does, okay, because negative 6 plus 8 is 2. So this is a set of factors that we want to use. All right, my next question is, can we use the shortcut? Well, yes, our A is positive 1, so we can use the shortcut. So these factors, we can write them as x minus 6 times x plus 8. Okay, we can use the shortcut. And that all equals 0. Okay, once we get here, we now have the case where this is a zero product rule. Alright, I've mentioned this before, I just never uh, told you guys what it, the proper term for it. Okay, but as before, same as before, when we have a product and it equals zero. Okay, when we have two numbers that are multiplied and it equals zero. Well the zero product rule tells us that in order to get zero, one of these or both have to be zero. Because we know that when we multiply two numbers, zero times the number is zero. So one of these or both have to be zero. So what that said is we can set them both equal to zero. So we have x plus 8 equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0. And now we just have a linear equation, okay? Something that's easy. So we just solve for x. So plus 6 here, get x equals 6. And minus 8 here, get x equals negative 8. So our solutions, okay, are x equals 6 and x equals negative 8. These are our roots. These are our x-intercepts. It's all the same. Okay. So that's how we solve by factoring. All right. And we want to factor when we have three different terms. Okay. Set it all equal to zero. And once it's set equal to zero, and we have a trinomial. Trinomial. We can use the AC method. So now. So last example for today, if we're given the function f of x equals 4x squared minus 13x plus 3, and we're asked to find the zeros, okay? We want to find the z zeros, or in other words, find the x-intercepts, all right? We first want to set it equal to zero, okay? Well, everything's already on one side of the equal sign, so we can set 
this whole function equal to zero. Once it's equal to zero, this is minus 13 by the way, once it's equal to zero you'll notice that we have a trinomial. We have three different terms. So we want to again use the AC method. Except this time we'll not be able to use the shortcut because this is a four. Right? It's not a plus one, it's a four, so we cannot use the shortcut. So in this case AC is four times three, which is twelve, and our B is negative thirteen. So what two numbers multiply to give us twelve but add to give us thirteen? Well, those numbers are negative one and negative twelve. Because negative one times negative twelve is positive twelve. Negative one minus twelve is negative thirteen. So these are the factors that we want to use. Well, we already said we cannot use the shortcut, so we want to we have to use the whole the whole method. So we want to use these terms to split up this middle term, this negative 13x. So this function or this equation now becomes 4x squared minus x minus 12 plus 3 equals 0. And this should be 12x. I apologize. So 4x squared minus x minus 12x plus 3 equals 0. So all I did was split this 13x into these two terms because negative x minus 12x is still negative 13x. Okay, so now we have polynomial with four terms. So we want to use the grouping method. This is one where we draw that imaginary line. Okay, and group two sides. So we have our imaginary line. We group the left side and we group the right side. Okay, we want to find a factor on both sides. We're going to factor out both sides. So here we would factor out an x. So we have this pen is not cooperating with me today. So we're left with 4x minus 1 on this side and on the right side in order to get 4x minus 1 in parentheses, we want to factor out a negative 3. So we have negative 3. So this factor out that, that will become 4x, and this will become minus 1. Okay? So on the left side, we factor out an x. On the right side, we factor out negative 3. And we'll find that we have 4x minus 1 in both. Okay, so now we can factor that 4x minus 1 out, and we're left with x minus 3, and this all equals 0. Okay, that's factor by grouping. We've done this before. For some reason, we, you do not remember, this should be in previous notes. Okay, so we can use the zero product rule. We can set these both equal to 0. Okay, so 4x minus 1 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. Well, if we add 3 to both sides here, we'll get x equals 3 as one of the zeros. And if we move the 1 over, add 1 to both sides, we get 4x equals 1. And if we divide by 4, just trying to solve for x, 4 will get x equals one fourth. Okay, so four x divided by four is x, and one divided by four is one fourth. So our zeros are if they ask for the zeros, okay. Our zeros are x equals 3 and x equals uh, 1 fourth, positive 1 fourth. Okay. So if we were to just to graph this, we would find that our x intercepts are at x equals 3 and x equals 1 fourth. Okay. 
So those are the three ways that we can solve quadratic equations, or at least the three ways that we're covering today. Okay, so just to go over those again, we can solve by graphing, where we just plug in the equation they give us or the function and look and find the x-intercepts. For some reason we can't identify those at first or just uh, by looking at it we can use uh, one of the tools, the zero tool that they have to analyze it. The second method is to use uh, square roots and we do that when we only have two different terms. And the third method is uh, by factoring, and we do that when we have a trinomial. Okay, at least the trinomial. So when we have at least three different terms, we want to use the method of factoring. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a great day.